This video is sponsored by Clean My Mac X. Mac OS Monterey will hit the Mac later this fall as a free upgrade, and you can actually try it out right now on your Mac by joining Apple's public beta. I've been using the Monterey beta for several weeks now, so let's talk about the top features that you'll find in this release. By the way, I have more videos on Apple's other big software releases like iOS 15 and new AirPods features as well, so be sure to check those links in the description and hit subscribe to stay up to date on all future videos. This is a year where I felt like Apple spent time working on features that they wanted to deploy to all their users. And I think the Mac benefits the most from this scenario because just about all of the major features coming to iOS and iPadOS 15 are also coming to Mac OS Monterey. Now I'm gonna save the coolest feature for last since that one isn't even in the betas just yet, but still deserves to be talked about. Instead, let's start with the feature that I think a lot of people are gonna get a lot of use out of, SharePlay. SharePlay is a new set of features for sharing experiences while connecting with friends over a FaceTime call. You can do things like listen to music together with Apple Music or stream a TV show or movie from the Apple TV app all while staying completely in sync with everyone else on the call. SharePlay isn't just for Apple's apps as developers will be able to tie it into their apps as well. And you can expect apps like Disney Plus, HBO Max, and TikTok to be available for SharePlay. You can also share your entire screen or just a specific app window, making it easy to collaborate on projects together. Now, I like the idea of SharePlay on the iPhone and iPad, but I think the Mac might be an even better place if you're watching long form content and want a bigger display. Of course, you can also airplay your session to an Apple TV if you wanna watch it on your biggest screen. Next, let's talk about upgrades in iMessage and Messages. First, the Messages app sees a new feature that actually isn't apparent in the app itself, but instead is used to populate other apps with things you receive in messages. And this is a feature that I really love. It's called Shared With You, and it takes links, images, and other content shared with you in messages and creates areas in corresponding apps that makes them easier to find. An example I gave in my iOS 15 video, let's say I send someone a link to the podcast I do with John Rettinger geared up. Usually it's difficult to find that link in an active message thread, but in Mac OS Monterey, if you go into the podcast app, you'll see a new shared with you row. In that row, you'll see all the podcasts that your friends and family have shared with you in messages. Now this also works with photos, Safari, Apple News, Apple Music, and the TV app. If I send you a link to a show or a movie that I think you'll like, and a week later, you open up the TV app, you'll see my recommendation waiting for you in the shared with you row. So it's now way easier to find the content and recommendations that people have shared with you rather than endlessly scrolling through your messages trying to find them. Also, Messages now has photo collections in Mac OS Monterey. If a friend shares multiple images, it will appear as a collage or stack of images that you can flip through right in line and you can click to view them as a grid or add them right to your photos library. Up next, let's talk about one of the new ways Apple is making the Mac help you be even more productive with a feature called Focus. Now, I don't know about you, but often I'm trying to get work done and then get distracted by a notification that takes me down a rabbit hole for 20 minutes. Focus allows you to specify what you're doing and the apps and people who you allow to get a hold of you while you're doing it. So if you're at work, you can have just the apps you need while you work sending you notifications while TikTok and Instagram stay silent. Or if you're reading or gaming or at home, you can have different focus settings for those activities. When you enable a focus, it's automatically set across all your devices. So if you're at your Mac studying, your iPhone won't be continually hitting you with unwanted notifications. When in a focus, your status will be shown in messages to anyone who is both in your contacts and isn't one of the people who you allow notifications from when in that particular focus. 
Now, before we talk about the controversial changes to Safari, I wanna give a big thank you to the sponsor of this video, Clean My Mac X. I've been using Clean My Mac X to keep my Macs running smoothly for about four years now, and I love it. But when it comes to any computer, you want to do what you can to keep it performing at its highest level, and that's what Clean My Mac X does. Every week, I get a notification letting me know it's time to perform a smart scan. This is where the app will run some maintenance scripts and optimizations. If you wanna reclaim space on your internal drive, use the space lens feature for a look at the biggest files that are taking up space on your system, and then use the shredder feature to clear some room. Clean My Mac X is one of the first apps I install on any new Mac, and I'm super excited that they wanted to sponsor this video. If you wanna give Clean My Mac X a try, head to the link down in the description below. And once again, big thank you to Clean My Mac X for sponsoring this video. Okay, up next, we have to talk about the big changes to Safari. I called these changes controversial a minute ago, and that's because the response to this has been mostly mixed with many people petitioning Apple to undo a lot of these changes. Now, I personally think they're fine and I have no problem going back and forth between Big Sur and Monterey beta versions of Safari. The biggest change is that the tab bar has been removed with all tabs instead sitting in what would be the address bar previously. In addition, that bar now takes on the color of the website that you happen to be browsing. It's a better visual look, but some people say it makes functionality of the browser get lost. Another feature here is tab management. If you're like me, then you have literally 187 Safari tabs open right now, literally right now on your Mac in multiple browser windows. The new tab controls in Safari make this a lot easier to deal with and reduces screen clutter because you're able to open and close entire groups of tabs as you need them thanks to a new feature called Tag Groups. They're stored in the sidebar and you can just open whatever group of tabs you need for a particular task and then click into another group when you're done. Up next, let's talk about AirPlay to Mac. This is one that I am glad to finally see come to the Mac as it's another feature that lets your Apple devices work more seamlessly together. Starting in Mac OS Monterey, you can AirPlay audio, video, pictures, presentations, etc., to your Mac from an iPhone, iPad, or even another Mac. So not only does it work as an AirPlay display, but you can also use your Mac as an AirPlay 2 speaker, which means you can send music or podcasts to the Mac as a standalone device or add it as a secondary speaker for multi-room audio. And now let's talk about universal control. This is the feature that I mentioned that hasn't made it into the beta, but I cannot wait to try it. Universal control gives you a new way to work across your Macs and iPads. It works with up to three devices as long as one of them is a Mac and it lets you use one keyboard, mouse, or trackpad on all devices. This makes it easy to perform tasks like copy and paste, type, or even drag and drop, letting you move files from one device to the other. There's a lot of coolness happening here, but the coolest might be that this uses continuity. So the only thing you need to do to set this up is be logged into your Apple ID on your devices. Then move the cursor from one device over to the other one you wanna to connect to, and you'll see an indicator appear on the receiving device. From there, you can just move your cursor seamlessly between the devices. There are a bunch of other features coming in Mac OS Monterey, including live text, a great looking shortcuts app, a new maps experience, iCloud private relay, and more. As I mentioned, the Mac OS Monterey public beta is available now, and the final version will drop in the fall. If I had to guess, in about 10 weeks from now. Let me know what you think. Which Mac OS Monterey features stand out to you, and do you plan on trying the beta? Let me know down in the comments below, and I'll meet you there for further discussion. Thanks so much for watching, as always, guys. I appreciate your support. I'm Andrew Edwards, and I will catch you in the next video.